Okay, this is a new part, which is called the underpainting. So I'm going to work on the very first layer of oil paint. I have only two colors on my palette and some medium. You can use any medium, but I would recommend it to use just pure thinner, but uh, odorless thinner, because we need to create a very thin layer, transparent layer. And so, of course, we're going to use transparent colors. As a brush, I'm going to use a small flat bristle brush if you don't feel comfortable working with bristles you can use of course a synthetic brush just don't take the smallest one it has to be close to middle size If you have ever watched my tutorials, you know that I usually recommend you to start painting from the darks. So if you look at the painting, the original one by Bogo, you can see that we don't have a lot of dark areas and all the shadows of the face are quite transparent. But anyway, there are shadows and they're much darker than the lights painting in the eye socket and then start working on the hair. It's a very big and very dark area, the darkest spot in this portrait. I'm using two colors, but you can use actually only one. Let's say burnt amber or raw amber. I just decided to make the color more interesting, not just brown, but more reddish or even a little bit orange. I use Burnt Amber by Michael Hardin as the basic color and I add a tiny bit of transparent red oxide lake by the old Holland. This color will add that reddish shade into our underpainting. I did not fixate the underdrawing, I did not spray over it. You can do it, if you feel like that. In my opinion, it's not really necessary. The charcoal will mix up with the oils, but it won't create mud. It can a little bit darken our underpainting, but that's it. And it's not a problem. So if you don't want to fixate it, or you don't know how to do it, if you don't have any spray, you can just paint over it. So right now you can see that when painting the hair, the charcoal mixes up with the colors of our underpainting, making it slightly darker but not really muddy. Again, there are different ways to make the underpainting. You can use more than one color, more than two colors. However, I do not recommend you to use any white, it's not transparent, or cobalts and cadmiums, as they are not transparent either. So we need to create a very thin layer. Transparent layer is going to be the first layer connecting our surface, canvas, and the upcoming overpainting. 
thicker layers of oils. Therefore, it has to be quite transparent and thin. You can also use some other colors like ultramarine, different ochres, sienas, umbers, and some other transparent oil paints. However, I believe that this is the easiest and fastest way to make another painting, especially if you are a beginner and you don't want to struggle with different techniques, different mediums and paints. So I would recommend you just to take the most simple medium or a little thinner and one or maximum two oil colors. So you see that after I quickly worked on the hair and darkened that area, I started working on the face. Again, we do not have dark shadows. They're quite transparent. But we have shadows, we have dark half tones. The image, the portrait is not flat, obviously, so we need to create the big volume of the head. How do we do it? we use different tonal values, which means some of the values are going to be lighter, some darker. That's how we will see and create the volume of the head. We can also work on the side surface of the head. I mean the cheek area, quickly paint the shadow on the neck, that area is also quite dark, not getting a lot of light, it's quite far away from the light source, I remind you that the light is coming from above. So quickly look at the original, you will see that the forehead is very light, the nose is very light also but the rest of the head is much darker. So we have to always compare what's light and what's darker. This way we create the volume of the head. We can't do everything dark, can't do everything light, or just in middle tone. We need to show this difference from the very dark, almost black, to the very light, close to white, but not pure white. It's never pure white in portraits. We can't use, and we never use pure white when painting body or portrait, just skin color. It's never pure white. It's a lot more complicated. And I will be talking a lot more about the skin color in the upcoming parts. When we start adding white and start using other colors from our palette. The underpainting can be looking quite rough, quick, unfinished, and this is not bad at all. Again, this is just the first layer, we will paint over it, it won't be visible, so we actually need to set up the right tonal values, find the right tones, find the darkest ones, the lightest ones, see the difference, show the difference, and this is enough. However, the other painting can be also made quite finished. I would say even photographic or very smooth and soft. So today I will try to do it. I will try to make it more finished and looking more nice and fine. If you have watched my previous Bougaro tutorials, you probably remember that the other paintings were very quick, rough. So in this case, today I want to show another technique. It's also quite simple. There is nothing complicated. We'll just spend some more time and soften the brush strokes, transitions between the halftones. 
So the other painting will be looking very soft, smooth, quite finished. And maybe we can even say photographic. So look at my painting right now, you can see that there is the tonal difference between the hair, the shadows in the eye socket, the side surface of the head, I mean the cheek area. Uh, they're not the same dark and obviously not black at all. So we have quite dark tones on the hair. Then we get the shadow in the eye socket. But the cheek area is obviously much lighter. Because we don't have really dark shadows over there. We have quite dark half tones. But they are very transparent. Very see-through. I would recommend you to work all over the canvas. Uh, don't stack in one place. Put a few brush strokes in the eye socket, then quickly paint in the hair, then darken in the cheek area, and so on. But don't paint one single detail. It's not the right way, and it can cause lots of mistakes in the future. So if you're a beginner, I would recommend you painting all over the canvas and again always compare compare the half tones of the cheek for example with the hair which is the darkest area in this case make sure what's lighter what's darker and then paint The neck in general is quite dark. Again, when working on the neck, quickly look at the nose. What is lighter and what is darker. The neck is obviously quite dark. Even the half tones of the neck are much darker than the half tones of the nose. So let's quickly darken the neck. So continue painting this way, always comparing what you do. Remember that it's quite important to compare half tones with the lightest and the darkest area.
Okay, right now I picked up my synthetic brush. It's also flat, much softer than the bristle one. And I just continue working on the portrait, doing absolutely the same, comparing, darkening. Always looking at the original, by the way. It's a master copy, it has to be alive. I start working more accurately on the details. Again, there is no need to finish anything right now. It's just an underpainting. However, we need to work on the facial expression and the lips are very important for that. We need to find the right silhouette of the face. Maybe correct the proportions of the facial details. So make it looking quite alike. And I also start softening some brush strokes. Again, I don't want it to look very rough this time. And to make it look softer, we need to use a softer brush. Synthetics are pretty good for this purpose. As you see again, I do not stock in one place. I paint a little bit here, a little bit there. If I see any mistake or anything I would like to correct, to fix, adjust, I try to do it right away. Let's work on the lightest area, which is the nose probably. Don't forget to correct the shape of the nose. It's quite important for the likeness. Correct the tip of the nose, its shape, the shape of the wing of the nose. Those small things are extremely important for likeness. And again, we're making a master copy we must care for even so small details. And yes, you can also take a piece of cloth and work on the underpainting, just smoothing out our brush strokes, and making a nice uh, soft solid underpainting. You can also use a piece of cloth just like you would use in a razor if you draw, for example. If we need to remove some oils from the canvas, just take a piece of cloth and you see it's working really perfectly.
So I continue to work with the cloth all over the portrait. I remove some oils from the areas where we have the strongest lights. But again, you can see that we don't get the blank canvas again. It's on shiny white. We still get some darker tone. And as I told you in the beginning, we are not using and we actually do not have any really shiny white areas. We are not using pure white paint when working on the portraits. And even when we work on the underpainting, we need to darken even the lightest areas. Again, the nose on the original painting is not white. Yes, it's very light, and especially if we compare it to the hair, it looks quite shiny, light, or maybe even white to some people, but it's not. It's not white paint. It's a lot more complicated. And when I use a piece of cloth to remove the oils from the canvas, I don't get a white surface. It's anyway slightly dark. So I continue to work with it on the nose. I remove the areas where we have some highlights. And you see that we get a very nicely looking underpaint. It's very smooth. It's very soft. Again, maybe we can call it even photographic. So it looks more like the original. It's not uh, rough. I don't think it's really important to always have this smooth underpainting. Uh, but again, I think that artists should know how to use different techniques. And so if you know how to use different underpaintings, how to use different colors, different brushes, mediums, you can then choose on your own which one you want to do for a portrait, for your own portrait or any other painting. Therefore, we can make different underpaintings. Again, we have the same purposes. We just learn different techniques, which is always great, in my opinion. Don't forget to once in a while get back to the details. Of course, as I always say, it's important to work on the big areas, big planes of the head. However, once in a while we have to get back to the facial details and correct them. So right now, when we're getting closer to the end, we need to once again, work on the eye, make sure it's not too big or too small and looking at the right direction.
I'm not using a lot of paints right now or medium. Actually, I'm working with the paints which we have on the canvas. I just shape it. I mean, work on the planes using tonal values. So I'm smoothing something out. Some areas I want to make darker because we need to keep the right contrast. We need some dark areas and dark accents. And basically that's it. So we just need to slowly finish it. Make some final brush strokes here and there. And then we can start working on the next stage when we can use white and all the other colors from our palette. Don't forget to let your underpainting dry for a while. Usually I recommend 24 hours, but anyway, it has to be dry and touch. Maybe you use some fast drying mediums and so it's gonna be dry within 12 hours. Anyways, if it's dry and touch, we can start working on the next step and paint over the underpaint. Well, you can see that at the very end, I'm using again my bristle brush. It's quite rough and sometimes, especially when the paints are already half dry, we can use it also like we use an eraser when drawing. So we can remove some excess oils from the canvas. We can do it also with a piece of cloth, as I mentioned, but for some really small areas like the ear, for example, we can use a small or middle size bristle brush. Again, we do the same thing, but using just another technique. Remember that the ear is not the lightest part. It's quite far away from the light source. It belongs to the side surface of the head, which is turning away from the light source. We'll talk a lot more about this in the upcoming parts. Just when making the underpainting, in this case at least, remember that the ear is not going to be really light compared with the nose and you will see that it's much dark. Anyway, I think uh, here at this point we need to stop working on the underpainting. I don't see any sense to continue working on it. It's looking quite well to me. Uh, we did what we were supposed to do. 
worked on the tonal values, on the lights, half tones, and shadows, of course. So now we need to let it dry. And then when it's dry and touch, we can start working on the next step. So see you in the next part of this tutorial.